Hello and welcome to the Intel Network and Edge panel on how the ORU reference architecture is driving 5G radio development. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. Mobile operators are looking to implement open systems in their radio access networks, and a key aspect of this is the radio unit, the RU, and the creation of a roadmap to OpenRU that addresses traditional macro radio and massive MIMO. The challenge, though, is to reduce overall design cost and accelerate time to market without sacrificing system level power and performance. Well, joining me now to discuss the technology considerations that will enable flexible and scalable end to end RAN solutions are Mike Fitton, VP Intel Programmable Solutions, Network Business Division at Intel, Nitin Sharma, General Manager, Wireless Communications at Analog Devices. Rajesh Srinivasa, SVP and General Manager, Radio Business Unit at Mavenir. Tero Kola, VP System Product Management, Mobile Networks at Nokia. And Paco Martin, Group Head, Open Run at Vodafone. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. And thank you very much for taking part in our round table. Let's first of all establish some basics. You know, why is Open Run necessary for today's market? And why is ORU so important? Paco, let me ask this question to you first. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, from our, our side, we think that the uh, ecosystem uh, of suppliers is so somehow in a similar situation we were back in 2005, when uh, there were not enough uh, radio suppliers incumbents were not innovating too much. We were not capturing all the opportunities uh, at the time, uh, thinking about uh, innovation and thinking about uh, cost. So, so we believe it's now the time to, to, to do things differently and change the way a radio has been done over the last uh, 30 years. And thanks God we have now an opportunity to do it because technology is allowing us to, to do so. So uh, the radios are one of the most important parts of uh, the overall um, open run system. Uh, we still spend most of the money in, in that element, probably 60, 70% of the total cost is in there. So if we have to choose an area where innovation is, is essential and where it, open run needs to make a difference, that, that's certainly the radio. So coming up with uh, open designs, will help us to uh, change fundamentally the, the, um, the, the cost, the cost structure. If uh, you don't need to have a strong or very large R&D teams because you can access to some uh, uh, radio designs, then, yeah, then you are in a much better place. So removing barriers of entry to uh, manufacture and, and develop radio systems, it, it's a, uh, something that we can have with Open Run and just with Open Run. Thanks, Paco. Terra, why is Open Run necessary for today's market and, and why the importance and significance of ORU? I think uh, Open Run can provide wider selection of network elements from different sources uh, to provide flexibility for network deployments. And since network vendors, they don't have all global products available exactly at the same time, Oran can bring wider selection for operators to choose from. Then ORUs are important in building the Oran ecosystem with classical and virtualized deployment models as well. And then also for traditional CSPs, obviously, but also for verticals and enterprise or private wireless customers. Uh, Nokia is a leading vendor in the radio space with a very broad, compelling remote radio head and massive MIMO radio portfolio, including evolution plans going forward. Thanks, Tara. And Rajesh, why, why do you see um, Open RAN as so important in today's market? And also, can you explain the significance of ORU? There are multiple reasons, but I would like to highlight three of them. Uh, innovation. Healthier competition in the ecosystem uh, and then leading to total cost of ownership. I think one leads to the other in this. Open standards and open interfaces fosters innovation. This we have seen basically in adjacent uh, industries, whether it be cloud, whether it be gaming, we have seen open interfaces fosters innovation. And that's so vital 
to have a healthier competition in the ecosystem. Open interfaces allows a level playing field for new entrants and as well as smaller players to have a right level playing field with the, the incumbents. And this accelerates the innovation. And that's so vital actually to bring down the cost. So when there is innovation and there is a healthier competition, automatically the cost efficiency kicks in in the market. And that we will see uh, you know, in the open RAN deployments as we, uh, you know, as we deploy and grow basically the networks uh, using open RAN. ORU is fundamental to demonstrating open and interoperable interfaces. Thank you, Rajesh. And Nitin, why is the OIU so important in the open run market? Yeah, thanks, Guy. Uh, first of all, um, thank you for inviting me to this panel and uh, speak to this really important topic. You know, uh, I think uh, Rajesh hit many of the key points in terms of why open RAN is important in this ecosystem. Uh, just to zoom in a bit in terms of what about the ORU? Um, when you think about the ORU, you know, we believe that the performance and the design of the radio itself um, critically impacts the end user experience and things like uh, network capacity and power consumption, which then have a downstream impact on, uh, you know, the OPEX that the operators eventually have to deal with. Uh, so in many ways, the entire system relies on the ORU and an efficient one. And if you think about it, um, the challenges of the ORU are increasing over time. Just to give you two examples of this, the diversity of product variants that we now have to deal with, the entire ecosystem, um, you know, ranges from, um, you know, covering bands from 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. There are over 75 to 80 bands. Uh, on top of that, you have to layer on the different different um, different types of form factors like massive MIMO, macro, small cells across a range of power outputs. So you're really looking at a really large portfolio of products that now need to be developed, supported and maintained through the entire life cycle. And what's important, uh, an important aspect of this is that radio architecture plays a big role in terms of how easy or hard the challenge becomes. Thank you, Nitin. And Mike, Open RAN is opening up so many new possibilities here. Why is it so important to today's market? Thanks for the question, Guy. And, uh, and secondly, thanks for hosting all of us on this really interesting panel session. So to the point of uh, Open RAN and ORU, it is incredibly important, but it is just one aspect of this really broad proliferation that we have of, of 5G technology to, to numerous applications that are becoming possible. And these are enabled by things like enhanced mobile broadband, but also massive machine type communication and ultra, ultra reliable low latency connectivity. So this huge different breadth of applications. We, our view is that 5G deployments will span a, a number of different requirements going from traditional deployments over to newer deployment models like virtual RAN as well. To support all this, a broad portfolio is required. And that's why we're going to need a, a solution that spans everything from custom deployments with ASIC and, and structured ASIC through to a reprogrammable hardware that will be used for more niche deployments and, and smaller deployment models, just to cover that breadth that we talked about already. And Mike, what does virtualization mean for the network and the radio unit specifically? Virtualization, this is one of my favorite things to, to, to talk about here. Virtualization, if is really fundamental as part of our future deployments and, and really exciting, I think, as well. If you look at a, a virtualized cloud native model, for example, like Intel's FlexRAN, it uniquely enables a, the plethora of the new usage models we'll get in 5G. So in addition to the kind of classic enhanced mobile broadband EMBB deployments, the vertical integration that you can get with um, virtualization, where you've got a vertical integration of, of network, of application and connectivity, is going to be fundamental for driving those kind of new usage models. Imagine for a moment the end-to-end -end quality of service provisioning that you would require to support URLLC, um, ultra-reliable low latency connectivity, for example, with remote surgery. It's going to that kind of application is going to necess necessitate vertically integrated solutions and a virtualized approach to ensure the, the right level of connectivity. Thank you, Mike. And Rajesh, is virtualization fundamental for the network and how does it impact the radio unit? Uh, virtualization is, is a central element actually for 5G deployment. 
if you, if you take a step back and look at 5G, uh, 5G inherently has a disaggregated deployment model. And 5G use cases, some of them are well-defined, some of them are yet to come, and hence, basically, it is very critical to have open interfaces. Let's take an example. Uh, let's take a, a, a low latency, high throughput use case. So for, for, for such use cases, the whole data path, including UPF, CUUP, and the DU need to be deployed in, a, in the same edge data center closer to the application. That provides basically low latency, high throughput use cases. And I can, I can go on to explain multiple different scenarios, but the key message here is virtualization is so vital and central for us to get basically the uh, most out of 5G deployments or to be able to critically uh, deliver basically 5G power, we need basically virtualization. Now, um, coming to the ORU, what does, what does virtualization mean for the radio unit? I would say that the radio unit becomes a network element now. Uh, you know, uh, that, that's, that's an interesting concept. It means, Features like zero touch provisioning without, without having to configure uh, automatically the radio basic like red comes up, the zero touch provisioning, remote configuration, troubleshooting, and network, uh, since the ORU is a network element, it is accessible by any other network element, which means basically I think security considerations need to be taken into account actually there. Those are, those are basically definite considerations. In addition to, I would say, latency, timing, synchronization uh, also becomes very important. And Paco, as the operator representative on the panel, what does virtualization mean for your network and the radio units? Well, if we uh, look at the essential components of uh, Open RAN, obviously open interfaces and the overall model is fundamental, but uh, you need to have a way to, to separate uh, hardware from software. You need to have um, something that allows you to use uh, software from from different suppliers and, and be able to change that in a way that is smooth and it doesn't impact your operations. So we believe that virtualization will allow for that. Tero, can you uh, give us some more insight into the, the importance of virtualization here in the network and its, its impact on the radio unit? So I think by separating hardware and software and utilizing a cloud platform virtualized from certainly provides flexibility for, for run deployments, but also it introduced some new complexity or new things that need to be managed. For example, efficient acceleration is critical when deploying VDU in the cloud or front hall transport requirements need to be fulfilled. They are very strict, for example, in terms of uh, delay requirements. And those that will actually limit the distance between far edge data center for video deployments and the actual radio units. And uh, yeah, then regarding the radio units, whenever the run is uh, disaggregated in a classical or virtualized basement deployment model, then a kind of reintegration uh, is required again. And uh, from Nokia ORU standpoint, it means that in an ideal case, the northbound interface to the baseband should be common, meaning no ORAN specific things between classical and VRAN. That, that would be ideal. And then when we connect our radio unit to baseband with other vendor, whether it's uh, classical or cloud, uh, we should also try to avoid explosion in number of different profiles, of these configuration profiles. And that's why we have prepared Nokia recommended profiles to be used with other parties as well. And Nitin, do you have any additional comments on virtualization? Uh, it's an interesting question. What does virtualization specifically mean for the radio unit? Uh, you know, uh, at Analog Devices, we've been building technologies uh, to support these uh, radio units ever since the days of uh, 2G, uh, you know, maybe even before. So we've been at it for, uh, you know, roughly three decades here. Uh, and, you know, one of the things uh, with all this talk around virtualization, we feel that the only part of the network that can't really be fully virtualized uh, is the radio itself. Now, with Open RAN, you know, uh, the, uh, the standards bring standard data models and open interfaces that allow 
the radio to be part of a virtualized network, you know, how, how Rajesh mentioned. Uh, but when you actually zoom in and you look at, you know, the lowest part of the protocol stack uh, that's uh, hosted in the ORU, uh, we believe that that protocol stack is best implemented with very specific uh, hardware implementations. Um, let's move on. Uh, I'd like to ask about Open Run and 5G and how they, in general, enable emerging requirements for connectivity. For example, RAN sharing, private networks, which you've already touched on, and intelligent edge. Tero, perhaps I could get your views on this first. So first I would say that, uh, that we in Nokia have already several operators with active RAN sharing with uh, different types of uh, uh, methods like uh, multi-operator run or MOC and, and we have also launched industry first 4G, 5G end-to-end -end slicing solution for enterprise and private networks. So uh, so I think Oran and Open Front Hall as such is not the real enabler for this. Actually Oran in a multi-vendor and open front hall context can rather increase the complexity in run sharing or slide uh, deployment models. Thank you, Tara. And Paco, how does Open Run and 5G enable these new connectivity requirements? That, that's a very good question. Uh, one of the main uh, challenges we have in Open Run is to uh, first make sure that we have the right maturity in the performance. We are, we are getting very good results already in, in rural environments, but we know it's going to take a bit of time until we are able to deploy in the ensure run. For example, th those scenarios are much more complex. You have uh, more traffic, you have more users, more interference, so they are more difficult to handle. So in this, in this transition from urban to dense urban, if there is one functionality that will come first in the list is uh, run sharing. And it's, it's not an easy one. And Mike, comments from you about uh, how 5G in general and specifically open run can help with new connectivity requirements? Uh, well, I. I, I touched on it earlier on and I, I said it was my favorite topic to talk about virtualization. So coming back to virtualization, that's certainly one aspect of it, having the a vertical network slicing as a, a key part of that. But in addition to that, I, I wanted to uh, kind of agree with one of the things that Tero said and expand on that. I think particularly the open interface part, mostly in something like private network, I think there's a really interesting angle where you imagine a new entrant wanting to deploy their own private network for example, in a smart factory, and they have a method for um, ensuring interoperability. So they could customize the features they want. You could imagine in, in a factory that could be a time-sensitive network or some specific features of the virtualized DU in, the, in that smart factory case. But then they can source off-the-shelf solutions for more standard parts of the network, um, for example, the, the radio unit. Thanks, Mike. And Rajesh, do you want to add any more comments about uh, how we can use Open RAN and, and 5G to address some of these, these new areas, such as private networks and intelligent edge? Absolutely. Both, uh, both the new um, use cases like RAN, net, RAN sharing and private networks uh, would, would need your open interface. Let me explain it further. So with the, I think Nitin mentioned about uh, the numerous radio configurations, considering basically 70 to 80 frequency bands, 4G and 5G, with, uh, with the wider spectrum actually in the C band, and and the and the and the transmit and receive path, the MIMO starting basically from 4TRX going all the way up to 64TRX. There are numerous radio configurations. That that means I think the radio sharing, I think more specifically, I think within RAN sharing, the radio sharing is going to become an interesting uh, trend that we will see emerging. And and the key aspect here is because of the open interface in radio, the radio sh sharing is made possible. Let me give an example here. Let's say two operators, each having their a, a different RAN vendor, wants to share basically a common RU. That is possible only if the deployment is ORAN. With the, with the ORU allowing basically an open interface, it, it can connect to two different basically RAN vendors and still basically allow the radio sharing use case to you know, kick in. And this will be a huge cost saving for operators, not just from the from the capex, but even from the opex standpoint. And not only a cost saving, it also basically it's environmentally friendly. Uh, you know, bringing in basically the energy savings as well. Thanks, Rajesh. 
Nitin, uh, we've spoken about the, the possibilities, the opportunities around Open RAN, but there are obviously challenges as well. What would you say are some of the, the main challenges for Open RAN? Yeah, Guy, um, a really good, interesting question. Um, you know, there is a lot of discussion, obviously, in the industry today around the challenges with disaggregation, uh, you know, talks about interoperability challenges, um, you know, security concerns. Uh, while, you know, I believe that all of these are really important challenges and they need to be addressed, uh, you know, we take a slightly different view and perhaps a slightly wider uh, view of the challenges that face us all, especially in, uh, in ORAN. And so we think one of the biggest challenges uh, that we face today is the codependency of all the players within the ecosystem. So let me expand uh, on that a little bit. Uh, what I mean is that it's no longer sufficient for a single supplier uh, to ensure successful execution of just their piece of the ORAN uh, system. Uh, we all collectively need to be thinking about what are the adoption chain risks that we all face. Uh, you know, so for ORAN to take hold, I believe that innovations will need to be co-managed. Uh, and those innovations really have to flow through the entire value chain uh, with sufficient value for everyone in the ecosystem to benefit from, right? And uh, so from my perspective, you know, that happens two ways. Uh, that happens through close uh, collaboration uh, and it happens through openness between the ecosystem players. Thank you. And, and Mike, what challenges do you foresee for Open RAN? I mean, I think we're looking at it from a radio point of view here, and, and that's really important. It's the key architectural control point for network transformation and really essential for 5G success. It's kind of interesting over all of the decades that the wireless has evolved. You know, we've moved somewhat away from the fact that you need the radio part, and, and still that's the most fundamental part to it. If you don't have that bit there, then nothing's going to connect to the network. If we look at ORU in particular, but um, radio in, in general, the, the challenges we've got are, are mainly around those performance goals. You've got very strict power and thermal requirements in the deployment models that we've got. We've got increasing amounts of, of complexity that's happening now. And at the same time, there's cost pressures that are uh, challenging us as, as well. So there's all of these competing demands that we've got for that. And then as we touched on for earlier on, it's the portfolio breadth part of it. So how do you do address all of those challenges and kind of um, make sure that you can have a, a good solution for, for everything? Well, to help us there, we have a, a number of advantages. I think the key thing is focusing from a silicon innovation point of view. I'm sure Nitin would, would say the same kind of thing from a, a mixed signal perspective with analog devices, uh, products, and then an Intel perspective, particularly on the digital side, you need a broad portfolio of solutions. Um, and then the second thing I would say is you can't go for a one size fits all strategy. We have so many different deployment models between traditional deployments to ORU, macro to Pico, including things like virtual RAN as well. And so you need that huge portfolio breadth. Thank you, Mike. And um, Paco, what would you say are the main challenges here for Open RAN? I would say uh, main, main issue number one or main challenge is to go fast in maturity. So as we mentioned before, we, uh, we deliver same performance and then better performance than what we had uh, in the past in the radio. Uh, I think at the same time, it's very important that that's probably at this moment, the, 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 key, the key element is we need to have money flowing into the system and it's, it's operators and uh, also with the help, help of some governments that are uh, wanting to accelerate open run that we have to make sure that the healthy ecosystem of suppliers that is already there uh, can be sustainable. So, so we need to announce plans, we need to raise POs, uh, that, that's very important. But ultimately, Open Run is about innovation. Thanks, Paco. And Tero, what are the challenges specifically on the, the radio side that you see for Open Run? So it was touched already a little bit, but, uh, but I also think that the key challenge is that the, that the multi-vendor integration increases the complexity that needs to be managed. And actually this uh, integration cost might be sometimes omitted in comparisons to end-to-end -end system from one vendor. So those comparisons need to consider several aspects, including also feature parity, performance parity, site solution, power consumption, and so on. So the end-to-end -end performance and KPIs they will become 
a bit more difficult to manage and optimize in multi-vendor environment. Thanks, Tero. And, and Rajesh, what would you say are some of the indicators, early indicators in the ecosystem that would actually signal a successful 5G and open run adoption? There are the key trends like open interfaces, disaggregated network elements, and virtualization really push towards private networks and RAN sharing. Let's let's uh, look at, I think Nitin, Nitin already mentioned about the numerous uh, radio configurations. If you start with 70 to 80 bands with uh, with multiple basically TRX MIMO elements starting from 4 TRX to 64 TRX, uh, micro and macro radios really necessitates basically RAN sharing uh, from an operator's uh, standpoint. So RAN sharing not only brings in cost advantage, but also environment friendliness with respect to energy saving. RAN sharing is also basically very key for private network deployments because networks are going to be owned by many private entities and RAN sharing is something that's basically going to really push this forward. Mike, what are some of the uh, challenges you're seeing for Open Run? I think the key thing to focus on here is that the radio is really the key architectural control point for, for network transformation and it's a, essential for, for 5G success. Getting that radio to meet the performance requirements that we need within a, uh, a power and thermally constrained environment, it, it can be really challenging. And at the same time, we're increasing brand, bandwidth, we're increasing complexity. And so the silicon complexity is going up at the same time. The additional dimension to it, and we touched on this already, was the breadth that's required for uh, various different solutions from everything from macro to pico deployments, traditional to, to virtual RAM. The other thing that we firmly believe from an Intel perspective is you can't have a one size fits all strategy here. And so you need a various different deployments that are gonna be possible for the, the different um, models that the equipment's gonna end up out in the field. So specifically for the digital portion on the, the radio side, this will span everything from reprogrammable hardware with FPGA through structured ASIC for when you want to reduce the power and then into standard cell ASIC as, uh, as we want to ramp into into high volume mass production. What early signs should we look out for that would indicate that the ecosystem is successfully adopting Open Run? Yeah, you know, uh, Guy uh, Rajesh, you were really on point uh, with uh, what you mentioned with the early indicators. Uh, you know, we recognize uh, at Unlock Devices that this is really a three to five year process. Uh, you know, we're in the early days, possibly year two. Uh, so there's, there's uh, you know, much uh, more that, um, you know, will, will happen over the next few years. Uh, so, you know, our view on this is Open RAN is more of a marathon uh, and not as much of a sprint. Now, the good news here is we're seeing the deployments um, and also we're seeing, you know, uh, operators like Vodafone really leaning in and taking an interest in what's happening in the ecosystem, where the gaps are in the ecosystem, where the efficiencies are, and really engaging at a much deeper level. So I think that's encouraging uh, already. Um, the other aspect of it, and uh, Rajesh uh, spoke about this a little bit as well, is we believe that the introduction of efficient solutions, especially for the radio unit, um, is really important because that can provide you know, cost and power competitiveness against current solutions uh, that exist uh, today. Thank you, Nitin. And Tara, are there any other indicators that we should look out for from the ecosystem? So if you just... Uh think about the Oran Alliance as such. So it was launched in uh, mid-2018, so not that long ago. So that was done by merging of uh, Exxon Forum with the Ciron Alliance. Now, in the, in the meantime, this community has grown to more than 230 vendors, research, academic institution, plus 28 operators have also joined this uh, Oran Alliance. So I think this is a uh, one good indicator for us in Nokia, it's uh, it's good to emphasize that as many as 24 of those uh, 28 operators that have joined Oran Alliance are among our uh, radio access network customers, and they are leaders with very strong technical competency. So many of our customers drive openness and disaggregation, and that's definitely one of the key reasons why we are active with Oran in Nokia. Thank you, Tara. Paco, um, Vodafone itself is a very early adopter of Open Run. What are some of the early indicators in the ecosystem that for you would signal a successful 5G and Open Run adoption in the, in the wider market? 
Well, I think um, uh, from the uh, supply uh, perspective, uh, open run is uh, starting to be available. We have a good number of uh, suppliers out there. Um, it's not just a small company. I think today we are seeing uh, very big companies uh, in, in all the areas, be it chips or, or baseband or, or radios, uh, betting, and betting on open run. So supply is starting to be okay. I would say that the minute we start um, seeing the uh, number of announcements uh, from operators and the uh, uh, total percentage of uh, of radio sites being open run uh, worldwide, you know, picking up, then then uh, we will be certain that that is is truly happening. Thank you, Paco. Well, that brings our discussion nicely to a close. Thank you, everyone, for taking part today and sharing your views and experiences. That was our panel on how the ORU reference architecture is driving 5G radio development, which is one of several focused around 5G. Be sure to watch the other discussions in our series from Intel, and you can find full details right here on the website. For now, though, thanks for watching and goodbye.